Hello, in this section of the tutorial we're going to learn how to do another type of statistical plot and that is called the uh, scatter plot. Uh, and that's a plot basically where you will have raw statistical data, numbers in other words, and lists, just like before, except in this case we're going to basically plot them like XY points on a graph. So we're not going to make a histogram, uh, we're not going to make a box plot, we're going to actually use uh, basically in this case two different lists to create a, a kind of a manual table of XY values and then the calculator is going to plot those XY values so that you can see what it looks like. So again with all of statistics there's there's not going to be a function or a formula generating your data usually. Usually it's going to come from surveys or some kind of something that you go out and, and you get the answers to by taking data in a laboratory or something like that and writing down a bunch of values and then you'll take those values and put them into a computer or in this case a calculator and see what your data looks like. So the first step is to input your data. So we go to the stat menu and just like before we edit our list. So we're going to go to our list. Now in this case I have some stuff left over from earlier I left it in there on purpose to show you how to clear a list. So we go up to the title, we hit clear, and then we hit enter, and then everything on the list disappears. So we have six lists, and when we're doing a scatter plot, basically you're going to create two different lists. This list right here, we're going to put the x values in, what are going to end up being the x values on our graph, and in this list we're going to put our our y values or what's going to end up being our y values and so this will be x comma y x comma y x comma y and then we're going to go in and link it into a plot so that we can see our raw data so trying to come up with an example to visualize when you might use this let's say you were going to do an experiment and you were going to start at the beginning of a month let's say the month was going to be March and on the first day of the month you're going to measure the temperature so we put number one here because this column this list is going to be the day of the month so this is March 1st and over here we're going to put the corresponding temperature that we have outside at let's say 12 noon uh, and so let's just pretend that on March 1st the temperature outside is 60 degrees all right and that's apologize again let's say that's in Fahrenheit but you know it could be Celsius could be Kelvin could be whatever temperature scale you want whatever you're measuring in so on the first day of the month temperature is given by this. Now on the second day of the month uh, the temperature is uh, going to be let's say again 60 degrees because you know hasn't changed too much let's say. So let's go down and let's continue putting the days of the month in. So this is the fifth day, sixth day, seventh day, eighth day, ninth day, and tenth day. So you could go as many days as you collect data for. You could go to 500 days if you want and in many cases when you're doing real experiments you do go out and take a tremendous amount of data and you would need to use a computer to to actually make it manageable. But let's say on the third day of the month we climbed up to 61 degrees and on the fourth day whoops, let me go down here. On the fourth day we were also at 61 degrees. On the fifth day though we took a nice little jump to 65 degrees and on the sixth day we jump to 67 degrees and we're starting to warm up because it's sort of the beginning of spring so let's say on the seventh day we jump to you know 69 degrees let's say and then on the eighth day we jump to 75 degrees and on the ninth day it was 77 degrees and a huge heat wave came through let's say and on the tenth day it was you know 80 degrees I don't know this isn't realistic but you basically collect the data well you can look at this data uh, and you can you can read everything off of it, but just like we talked about before, you like to visualize data. That's why we draw pictures. We're, it tells us what the trend is. And so we want to do that. So we have our lists inputted. And in order to, to identify a graph and link it to a graph, we go second function stat plot. Again, you can have three stat plots. I never really recommend that you put more than one on there at a time, but we're going to, in this case, just choose number one and hit that first thing we need to do is turn it on so right now it's off we'll highlight on and we'll hit enter and then we're going to keep this guy highlighted this is the icon for scatter plot right here and it's just a bunch of little lines that are little dots that are kind of disconnected and so we go down below the X list is L1 those are the X values that's going to end up being the horizontal axis which is the day of the month Y list is going to be the vertical axis and that's going to end up being the temperature 
And then you need to pick your what you want your little dots to look like. Do you want them to be just a dot on the screen? I think that's hard to read, so I'm not going to pick that. Do you want them to be a little square or do you want them to be a little plus sign? Well, I happen to like the plus sign, so I'm going to leave that alone. So I'm done with that. I've got the list generated. I've got them linked in here. I've got my plot selected. I've turned the plot on. And now if you go to graph, you're not going to see anything. And that's because um, just like before, this graph button is only used really for functions or polar equations or things like that. If you're plotting anything statistical, you need to hit uh, the, go to the zoom menu. And it's buried in there. And I don't think it's a great idea, but you need to go to number nine, zoom stat. So you hit number nine, and then there's your data. And you can see, uh, and you know, we can zoom out a little bit even. We'll hit zoom out, right? Number three. And we'll hit enter again to tell it to zoom out. And there's our data there. And uh, we can actually go into the zoom menu uh, and zoom in just to get a little bit closer again since that was a little bit too far out. And then here's our data. So here's our data. And on day number one, we're down here and we're obviously increasing temperature as we go. And we can sort of see that in the first few days of the month, it, the temperature was basically constant for several days. And then once it took off, it really shot up. Uh, very very quickly so it's a very graphical way for you to see what your data is doing is that it you know it stayed relatively constant and then it took off like a rocket and if you were to continue this experiment then maybe it would level off again because obviously it's not going to go up to you know 200 degrees it's not possible so it eventually would level off if we continued our our, our guy out there so when you go to the zoom menu you have all of the same functions that you can use to zoom in and out on this guy just like you did for functions. And uh, the other thing that you can do that's really, really useful when you're doing these sorts of things is you can go back. Let's go hit number nine to go back to our guy and let's hit the trace button. And this is going to tell us the value of the data that we already put in. So on the first day of the month, temperature was 60 degrees. And we still 60, climbing up to 65, 67, 69. It goes up and up and up and you can see it right there. So basically this is really interesting because you can go collect data, you can put it in your calculator and then you can see what it looks like. And it's fairly easy with 10 points to know what it's going to look like. But if you had a large amount of data uh, or something that was just a little bit more difficult to visualize, then putting it on the screen would make it much, much easier. Now let me go back in and show you one more thing. Let's go back into stat plot and go back in and edit our number one function. And by the way, you could add another function here, enable it, turn it on, link it to another pair of lists, and, chain, and, and, and set it to a square, for instance, if you wanted to, instead of the plus sign. And when you did that, uh, then you would see the other data plotted right alongside it, and they would be represented by little squares instead of little plus signs. So that's, that's kind of neat. Uh, but if you go back into stat plot and edit the one that we're actually using right now, uh, and instead of scatter plot we go to this guy over here this is basically going to do exactly the same thing when I in, uh, do this one except instead of little dots the dots should be connected by a line so let's go and do the zoom stat again and we will see that now we've joined it with a line sometimes you know if you have a lot of data it's very useful to run a line through it uh, rather than just kind of visualize it so that's what that function is doing. So it just depends. It's a little bit more cluttered to look at. It's hard to see where your points are and where the line is. So if you have a small number of data, it's probably good just to leave it in the other uh, way, in the uh, XY data. And sometimes in certain cases, it might be better to connect them with a little line segment. So that is a good primer on plotting uh, XY scatter plots in your, in your TI calculator. First step is always to go in you put your data into the list. You have a column for X and a column for Y. Once you do that, you go into the stat plot menu. You edit the one that you want to do. You select the type of plot. You put the list for X, the list for Y, select your mark. Then you go to the zoom menu, hit number nine, and then your plot is right there. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can trace, and it can, uh, it can really be handy in certain situations.